Herb that is. I do want to walk you over here because this is really neat as well. These are patches from the original LA County divers. And if you want to kind of know the history of scuba training, it all started here in the United States with the LA County divers. And here's a brief list down here at the bottom. You can kind of see how scuba certification agencies came to form. And What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're down here for my family's vacation over Easter and we're on the outer banks of North Carolina. We're actually down in Hatteras Village and if you're familiar with this area, then you'll know that there is a maritime museum down here that has a slew of different cool stuff in it. But they do have a scuba diving uh, exhibit here that I wanna kind of walk you through and show you some of the cool stuff. And if you can't hear me, I do want to apologize. I kind of got to be quiet when we're in here. But I do want to walk you through and just show you some of the cool stuff they've got here. So they got, of course, these are fins and masts from the 1940s and 50s. And the reason you can tell that is from the way the frame that holds on to mask or holds on the mask itself, it's basically just a rubber gasket that's got the frame that clamps over the gasket and the lens itself. There's no way to really uh, equalize the system or to clear it. Basically, you've got to open the mask, reach up, hold your nose, equalize, and then you can put your bas mask back on and clear it. But these were some older style slip-on fins here. I believe those are from Swim Fins was the brand there. Moving on over, we got an original Aqua Bell diving helmet. Now these were not very practical at all as far as depth, but it was a neat little design. It was kind of the first surface supplied air for the recreational market. We got a Sea Hunter style spear gun. That's a bleed from the 1960s there. We've got an old uh, light system here as well. And then one of the things that I really found cool was this device here. And it's basically just think of a, a pony system or some type of uh, spare air system, but this was actually used not just in diving, it was actually used in movies too for stunt men and things like that. They'd wear it under their costumes and they could breathe like in fire suits and things like that. So it was a neat little system that kind of crossed over from the scuba industry over into the uh, film industry as well. Coming over here on this wall, we've got a couple of neat designs. You may have heard me talk about in the past when we talk about horseshoe style BCDs. Basically, this is what it was. Now, I can remember my grandfather, he actually started on a horseshoe style BCD. And of course, in the 80s, we had the standard jacket style BCDs as well. Now, a lot of these did not have power inflators. They were only oral inflators to begin with. Uh, as we progressed on, you'll start seeing low pressure inflator hoses connected to them. And that's when you know that you were really getting into the good stuff when you had a power inflator as well. But you can see all the different horseshoe style BCDs that were being used back then as well. And over here, of course, you can see the different pillar valves and different scuba valves as well. This is an actual pillar valve here, and then a standard yoke style valve here as well. You can kind of see the internal part of the tank as well. But up here, you can see these are pillar style valves as well. They're not your standard. They are a yoke system, but it's not a standard scuba valve uh, of what you think of today. And we still have pillar valves in the scuba industry. Typically, you'll see them on O2 bottles versus scuba bottles and things like that. Moving on over here, of course, we've got different camera systems. Uh, these are, of course, from way before the scuba actually started, but these were very popular in the 1960s and, and around that age group as well. Moving on over, of course, we have a slew of double hosed and single hose regulators here. Now, double hose were very popular in the 50s and 60s, and then the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, single hose regulators started coming out and you can see all the different manufacturers aqua lung water lung it was all different types there that were coming out and these are still popular today with a bunch of old timer divers who are going out there and doing a bunch of uh, diving reenactment and things like that but uh, it's really neat to see this stuff as well and i'm pretty impressed with how preserved this stuff is a lot of these hoses they do go bad over the years so it's pretty cool to see um, just how preserved that is. I do want to walk you over here because this is really neat as well. These are patches 
from the original LA County divers. And if you want to kind of know the history of scuba training, it all started here in the United States with the LA County divers. And here's a brief list down here at the bottom. You can kind of see how scuba certification agencies came to form. In 1959, we had the YMCA. They developed, of course, the first national diver certification program. Then 1960, you had NAWI. And there's a still, you know, NAWI's still in business today. They still got instructors out there teaching. And then you had NASDS in 1961, which actually got absorbed into SSI in 1970. But then, of course, you had PADI, the Professional Association of Dive Instructors, started in 66. In 1970, you had Scuba Schools International. Like I said, they did take over NASDS. Um, and that was actually in 98 when NASDS merged with SSI. In 2008, the YMCA announced that their programs would cease. However, Scuba Educators International did take over the YMCA program in 2008. So that's pretty neat to see that here as well. It kind of gives you a history of how training agencies have formed. And the last little bit that we're gonna look at, of course, is uh, a surface supplied system here. This is basically a compressor unit here that ran from the surface. You have a hard hat diver that would go down and of course the air would be uh, sent down to him via his hard hat as well. So it's really neat to see this stuff down here. Um, if you're ever in this area, definitely come down here, check out this museum. It's absolutely free to get in. And there's a slew of stuff here. They've got a pirate section. They've got a lighthouse section. They got one of the original heads to the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse down here, which is really cool to see as well. But they've got all different types of stuff in this museum. I just thought it was cool to see this diving section of something I really wanted to share with you guys. But come check it out if you're down here on the Outer Banks. Like I said, it's free and it's definitely a good little family trip. But guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. I know it's short, but if you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.